Namaste. So the title of this video means that Dharma leads to Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga leads to Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga leads to Dhyana or meditation, Raja Yoga. And Raja Yoga leads to Jnana or realization of the self. This is the functional principle of Vedic civilization. That is, the culture which is based on the Vedic literatures. Now, that might seem obvious and simplistic, but it's absolutely the truth. Because unless one of these things leads to another, the whole purpose is lost. And the problem today is that they have become fragmented. In other words, people talk about Dharma or the Varnashram cultural structure of Vedic civilization as if it's something separate from the karma, the karma yoga, the ritualistic worship of the deities in the temple. And then they talk about that as if it's something different from bhakti and so on. But they're not different. They're part of a chain that leads to a certain destination. And that destination is full self-realization. So now that I've stated it in a nutshell, let's go into it in detail. By dharma, we mean the system of four occupational orders and four stages of life called Varnashram Dharma. Varna, ashram. Dharma means duties or religious principles. Varna means literally color, but in this context it means the four occupational orders. Brahmana, priestly intellectuals, Kshatriya, kings and warriors and administrators, Vaisha, traders and merchants and farmers, and Shudra, or the workers who serve the higher classes. Normally about 90% of the culture is Shudra. And this is by design, it's also by nature, that most or actually an overwhelming majority of the culture, the population of any culture, is basically ignorant and uneducatable. Why? Because they don't want to know. <laughs> they don't have the thirst for knowledge. So they can't be brought to a higher state of knowledge by any means. Their role is simply to work and serve others who have more intelligence. Then the Brahmanas are the intelligent class. They are meant to guide the whole society. The Kshatriyas or the political leaders of the society and the warriors are meant to protect the society. The Vaishyas, or the mercantile class, are meant to produce the goods and the economic trade and so on that fuels the activity and supports all the other classes. Now, these four orders of life are contrasted with the stages of life, brahmachari, grihastha, Vanaprastha and sannyasa. Brahmachari means student life, when one is supposed to be celibate to retain all the knowledge that he's been given by the usually by the brahmanas. The brahmanas should be the educators, and the students 
can learn according to their capacity. And the occupational uh, proclivity of the individual is determined at this stage in actual Vedic society. <laughs> actual Vedic society is not divided by birth in a certain family, but as Krishna says, by guna and karma, by quality and work. What kind of work is a person drawn to? What are they talented in? And what is their quality of intelligence? That is what should determine their occupational status in society. But after the student life is complete, then one can move into married life. Grihasta. Grihasta means householder. Griha means house. So wife and children become the center of one's interest. Then once the family is complete, the children have gone off and gotten married themselves and established in their careers, then the husband, at least the husband and possibly the husband and wife together, if they are of such a mind, can take vanaprastha. Vanaprastha means literally a forest dweller. And the idea is that they go to a very simple lifestyle. They give up their opulent house and they assume the dress of sadhus or mendicants and they live in an ashram or even in the forest and perform austerities. And if this leads to renunciation, then the man can take sannyas. Actually, sannyas is restricted to the brahmana class. And the brahmana class, being the intelligent ones, they become the masters, really, of the whole society. The whole society should be guided by this. Why? Because it is necessary to have at the lead level, you know, the, the real leaders of society, men who are completely renounced and completely spiritually realized. Without this, it's like the society is missing its head. Huh? like a chicken with its head cut off, running around, you know, pointlessly, uselessly. And that's what we have today, because there is no qualified Brahmana class. The so-called intelligent class today are simply university-educated rascals. They don't follow any religious principles. They don't have any spiritual knowledge or realization. In fact, they have a tendency towards materialism and atheism by culture, by design. They're educated that way. So today's society is just a complete mess, just chaos, nonsense. That's why people are feeling lost. They have no guidelines. But anyway, if one is able to uh, order one's life by these Varnashram principles. Then he moves on to karma yoga. Karma yoga means ritualistic temple worship. Now, if one performs karma yoga successfully, all the problems of life are solved by the grace of God. And even in a chaotic world that we have today, if one performs karma yoga nicely as a duty, a regular daily function, gradually all his problems are solved. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes steadiness and faith and knowledge, guidance. In other words, one has to take a guru and adhere to his instructions. And as I've pointed out so many times, if karma yoga is done nicely, it automatically leads to bhakti. Bhakti means love of God. 
appreciation of the exalted and wonderful qualities of God, which is developed by hearing from the scriptures and from the brahmanas about the nature, qualities, pastimes, and other activities of God. For example, the story of creation, and so on. These are narrated in the Puranas. Purana means history. It means ancient times. So, if this bhakti yoga is successful, if it leads from regulated devotional service to spontaneous love of one or another form of God, then that automatically leads to meditation. Why? Because the mind is attracted by these wonderful qualities of God. And so the mind becomes concentrated naturally. And at a certain point, one enters the path of Raja Yoga, or Dhyana, meditation. Meditation means to still the mind, to empty the mind, and to be aware of awareness itself. This is the process of neti neti given in the Upanishads. Not this, not this. Whatever comes up, whatever idea, thought, word, or sense object is perceived in the mind, we reject that. Neti, not this. And then the next one, not that, <laughs> not these, not them, not those, not no nothing. <laughs> and this is a stage of shunyata, or sushupti consciousness, where there is consciousness, but no objects. And this, when it is cultivated and becomes one's natural state, automatically leads to jnana, or realization of Turiya consciousness. This is Brahman realization. And this is attainable. But only if the previous elements in the chain have been attained and are stable and strong. So we never leave our need for the previous stages. It is not that when one becomes self-realized that he gives up dharma or karma yoga or bhakti yoga or any of the principles of the Vedic life because the whole chain is necessary to reach the ultimate stage. This is something a lot of people miss they think, oh, now I'm in bhakti, I have no need for karma yoga. No, <laughs> you have to keep up your karma yoga, or you will fall down. And what to speak of, nowadays we have the neo Advaitins who think that, oh, I know Brahman, or actually I know about Brahman, I know some words about Brahman. <laughs> and they think that's sufficient for self-realization. So they can drop everything. They can give up bhakti and karma yoga and every, all principles of, you know, civilized spiritual life and just, you know, sit there and contemplate Brahman. Well, that's nice if you could do it, but we find in practice you can't. And the neo Advaitins, their idea of contemplating Brahman is to just live like an ordinary person engaged in sense gratification. What advancement is that? This is nothing. <laughs> Actually, less than nothing, because on top of not making any advancement, they're also committing offenses. So it leads to a negative advancement. <laughs> really dangerous attitude. So therefore... One should see the path of the Vedic literatures as a, a completely ordered sequence of things that you have to do, know, and realize in order to reach the ultimate perfection of life 
and that none of the pieces or none of the links in the chain can be missing. Huh? They say a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So make all the links strong. From dharma, through karma, through bhakti, through raja or dhyana yoga. And this will automatically bring one to the perfection of life, which is complete self-realization. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.